Hi, I'm Lou and I'm going to show you how to recycle scrap foam into usable insulation. You can buy 4x8 sheets of polystyrene white foam at the hardware store, but that same kind of foam is thrown away by you and your friends and neighbors every day because there's no way to recycle it. We're about to change that. I'm building a foosball clubhouse inside this old grain bin. I have stud walls and paneling and I want to fill these cavities with insulation but these random pieces don't fit very well. Also, stacking random pieces of foam together leaves big air gaps, which defeats the purpose of the insulation. The solution is building this foam grinder. In parts, we'll need four general purpose cheap saw blades, a two foot length of half inch threaded rod, four nuts and two washers, and some scrap one by wood to build a box. Chicken wire, half inch PEX tubing, and a $15 bathroom vent fan. Saw blades all look like they just have a round hole in the center, but in fact, they actually all have a knockout like this that if you push on enough will pop out, and we don't want that to happen. So we'll mix up a little bit of JB Weld and smear it around the seams to reinforce the knockout. We'll grind one end of the threaded rod smooth so it's easier to grab with the drill. We want the saw blades like this on the rod. Center the first saw blade about five inches over from the end we did not grind. Using a piece of wire, hook over one of the teeth of the saw blade and tie it down tightly to the rod and twist the wire here to hold it down. Do the same thing on the other side. Put the next blade on, lean the other way, but make sure the teeth are facing in the same direction. Here are the blades all wired up. Now we need to build a box that's 21 inches by 8 inches on the inside. I cut my boards and I'll pop them together with a nail gun. Now we'll drill 11 16 axle holes on each end for the threaded rod. Put two nuts on each end, followed by a washer and a small piece of PEX tubing to use as a bearing. Tighten the two nuts against each other to create a stop. The washer and bearing go tight against the nuts and the whole thing slips into the bearing hole. If you have it, put a little lithium grease on the bearings, but it's not necessary. With both ends done, here's our basic grinder. Now we'll chuck a drill on where we remove the threads and give it a test. That's exactly what we're looking for. Obviously we're going to have to be really careful when using this thing because it has four spinning saw blades. I've chosen to make this guard that goes on like this that provides some protection from the top. To go underneath the grinder, I built a catching box with a hole for the foam to get out. We'll throw away the cover for the bathroom vent fan and tip it up against our box and attach it with wire. Large chunks of foam that don't get completely ground will clog up that fan, so we'll staple in a piece of chicken wire here as a filter. The grinder goes on top of the catching box like this. Here's the final grinder with the drill hooked up and that vent blower and I've also hooked a hose on the end of it. Here's the grinder and the blower hose hooked up to the wall cavity. And away we go. This is not at all helpful, but too fun not to do. And there we are, all full. This project has a huge bonus if you like getting messy. For the science minds in all of us, I made a box surrounded by purchased foam insulation, two inches on the bottom, sides, and top. We'll make a hot cup of water. We'll put it in our box and measure the starting temperature at 176 degrees and put the lid on it. 30 minutes later, you're at 155 degrees. Now I'll build a version of that same box using our ground up foam. A new cup of hot water. In it goes with a starting temperature of 176 degrees. And here is our two inch foam top. 30 minutes later, the temperature is 152 degrees. So store-bought insulation is 3 degrees or 12% more efficient. 
However, homemade insulation is 100% more free and fun. Thanks for watching and good luck making your free insulation.